Um, right, so I think we'll make a start. Um, hi everyone, thank you. Welcome, for thank you for joining. Um, I'm Ibrahim Sadrali Plon, and I work for the um, physical activity team um, as the service lead for Birmingham City Council's public health team. And we're joined by um, Dr. Ramir Sattar, who um, will be leading this webinar, and Chima Amadi, who will also um, support for, the, for, for this webinar. Um, I think we have about 12 people um, on this meeting. Um, more people might join, and we'll let them in as they join. So as you probably, you probably all know when you signed up for the webinar, it's part of sort of uh, the Black History Month, and we're focusing on um, Black and ethnic minority um, health and well-being. This um, webinar will focus specifically on um, health activity within South Asian communities, and it's a way to equip um, health professionals. I'm assuming most of you, if not all, um, work in the health sector or in, in some capacity. So hopefully we'll equip you with tools, resources, and um, information to support um, communities, um, South Asian communities with their physical activity. Just a few, um, just a few housekeeping. Please um, take your cameras and off, and your key stay muted, um, unless of course there is a discussion within the webinar. If you want to or need to ask any question, please put your questions um, in the chat. Um, Tima will collate your questions at the end, um, and then we can address um, those questions. I'm just making sure I've covered everything that I needed to cover. So this webinar um, is being um, recorded, so um, please be aware. And we will be sharing, um, I hope, the recordings and the slides um, after um, the, the, the webinar. Thank you. Does anybody have any question before we start? Before I hand you over to Ramiz? Thanks. Um, so Chima has put the... Um, so we'll be doing some um, some interactive exercises um, on on Menti. So you have a link in the chat that you can click on that will take you directly to the Menti page. Um, if you need a code, there's a code as well there that Chima put. If you want to use your phone um, to um, do the interactive exercises, there's a QR code as well that you can scan from your phone um, that will take you directly to the Menti page. Stay on that Menti page, please, till the end. So although we might have multiple um, we might have to do some exercises at, at the beginning, uh, but we might also have other sort of um, instances where you might need your um, your mentee yeah, page. Um, one final thing, please take your cameras and your um, speakers off, sorry, your um, stay on mute unless um, you're brought in for any, any discussion. Thank you very much. Remy, it's over to you. Hi, thanks, Ibrahim, and hi, everybody. Let me, before I start, let me share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes, Remy, I can see your screen. Perfect. Thank you. So hi, everyone. My name is uh, Remy Sattar. I am a sports and exercise medicine doctor, and I've been working with the public health team since August this year. Today, I'm here to raise awareness about the significance of physical activity within South Asian communities in Birmingham. Okay, so today's session, I'll mainly be focusing on talking about the benefits of physical activity and focusing on the South Asian communities in Birmingham compared to the general population. We're going to touch upon the evidence behind the benefits of physical activity, provide some tips and skills to help engage people in getting more physical activity. I will also share some links to services that are available in the local area. Now, so before we start, I thought it would be a good idea to use Menti as an icebreaker. Now, I don't know how many of you have actually used this before in the past, but forgive me, this is my first time I'm actually using this, and I really hope this works well. So if you can follow the instructions and either go to menti.com and enter the code, 
or you can use the QR code and scan that. And then we can start off by asking a few questions first. Um, Chimo or Ibrahim, could you tell me if everyone has signed up to it? Because I can't seem to see anything. I can only see my slides. Um, yeah, there is a second. Yeah, I think only one person signed up yet. So, yeah. And then we got 15. I think we have four people, six now. So, yeah. Uh, we've got 15 people who signed up haven't we so we should be expecting a few more i'll give another minute for anyone else to sign up for it OK, I think we've I got we've got eight people, so let's let's start first. So just to start off with, what is your occupation? OK. That's useful. And the next question would be, how confident are you with giving physical activity advice to patients? So we've got a good mix here. A lot of people are quite confident. OK, that's a good place to start with. So today, let's delve into the important distinction between physical activity and exercise. While they both involve movement and exertion, they have different characteristics. First, let's talk about physical activity. This includes any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that require energy expenditure. In simple terms, it's all the movements you make throughout your day, from taking stairs to walking the dog. It's not necessarily planned or structured, it's just a part of your daily life. Whereas exercise is more of a specific and deliberate form of physical activity, it's planned, structured, repetitive and purposeful. This means you intentionally set aside time for activities like jogging, weightlifting or yoga. Both have their place in maintaining a healthy lifestyle and understanding this distinction can help make you more make more informed choices about your physical well-being. Physical inactivity is basically described as doing less than 30 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity per week. Again, going back onto Menti, how familiar or unfamiliar are you with the Chief Medical Officer's physical activity guidelines? Any more responses? We've got 10, so eight so far. Okay. So I'm sure most of you have seen the UK Chief Medical Officer's Physical Activity Guidelines. We've got 50 50 um, from the mentee outcomes. 
So the guidelines basically are aged for adults between the age of 19 to 64, and usually it is aimed for at, to aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity or 75 minutes of vigorous activity each week. And all adults should undertake muscle strengthening activities such as weightlifting, yoga, or heavy shopping, carrying heavy shopping at least two days a week. In addition to this, there was further guidance which was recently added stating to minimize the amount of time spent sedentary. And for children and young people between the age of five to 18, the guidance st states that you aim for an average of at least 60 minutes of activity uh, per day across, across the week. Now, I don't know if any of you have come across this fantastic resource from the W Health Organization uh, regarding the every move counts. This graph visually represents the relationship between the amount of physical activity and the health and fitness benefits you can achieve. It serves as an excellent guide for individuals looking to lead healthier lives. This graph breaks down physical activity into different categories, ranging from sedentary to light, moderate and vigorous activity. What it shows is the more you move, the greater the benefit. Sedentary individuals, those who engage in very little physical activity receive the least benefit. In contrast, as you move up the chart, you notice a significant improvement in health and fitness outcomes with a sweet spot in terms of how much benefit you get for being active between 150 to 300 minutes a week. Even small increases, as you can see from the chart, even small increases in physical activity can lead to notable improvements. Now this slide might appear crowded, but let's focus on the more, most essential elements, which is the green boxes, as you can see. These represent the proven evidence-based benefits of physical activity. For instance, we have clear evidence supporting the role of physical activity in effectively managing chronic medical conditions. And it's not just a recommendation, it's well, these are well-established facts. Physical activity goes beyond just physical health. It's also a powerful tool for improving self-esteem, enhancing cognitive function, and also most importantly, fostering enjoyment and happiness. These aspects are all backed by robust evidence. Whereas the boxes, which are colored in yellow, they show mixed evidence, but they still show that physical activity improves quality of sleep, reduces stress and depression. And Birmingham has produced a set of posters during the Commonwealth Games, highlighting the evidence of different Commonwealth Games sports on the impact of physical, on general physical health. So as I said today, we're going to be focusing on the South Asian communities. And when, when you do a Google search, um, when it comes to the definition of South Asian communities, the, there was varying definitions, but the main seven countries that we came across were India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Bhutan, and Nepal, with an estimated population of 1.94 billion. And then this is us looking at the 2021, consent, uh, 2021 census about the different ethnicities in but in Birmingham, and as you can see, the purple box uh, represents the Asian British Asian population, and they represent 31% of the population in Birmingham. And out of that 31%, 54.9% of Asians are represented by the British Pakistani population. So why are we focusing so much on the South Asian population? These two graphs here, as you can see, represent a comparison between the physical activity levels of South Asians in Birmingham and other ethnic groups reaching the recommended guidelines. Here you can see that only 48.2% of South Asians meet these guidelines compared to a slightly higher 54.3% in other ethnicities. This highlights a noteworthy disparity. Additionally, South Asians demonstrate higher inactivity rates at 38.1% compared to the lower 33% for the rest of the population. What's of particular concern is that over the years, instead of seeing an improvement, South Asian communities appear to be on a concerning downward trend compared to data from six years ago. These bar charts, 
provide a comparison between the muscle strengthening habits of South Asians and the rest of the population in both Birmingham and England. So the Birmingham one is represented by the red graph and the England one is the blue one. South Asians are falling behind even in this aspect. They have fewer individuals meeting the recommended guidelines of at least two plus sessions per week of muscle strengthening. Now I've got a couple of slides coming on after this as well, which shows you some data from the Global Physical Activity Observatory focusing on countries like India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. These nations also follow the same WHO physical activity guidelines. What's particularly intriguing is the prevalence of physical activity levels among, of this, among people of the same ethnicity living in these countries. In India, it stands out at a remarkable 66%, as you can see, the physical activity prevalence. Um, then if you look at in Pakistan, again, it shows that the physical activity prevalence is 66%. And in Bangladesh, it's 72%, which is a lot higher as well. This is a lot more than the 48.2% of South Asians reaching the minimum physical activity guidelines in Birmingham. An interesting observation is the gender difference in physical activity. It's evident that men tend to be more active than women, which is a pattern we consistently see across all three countries. So. Let's address the question of why there's a disparity in the, in the prevalence of physical activity among South Asians living in Birmingham compared to their counterparts in South Asia. Several factors come into play. First, there's a notable difference in work environments. South Asians often have a high prevalence of physical activity jobs compared to Birmingham. Additionally, the climate and overall environment in South Asia tend to be more conducive to outdoor activities, creating an environment where people are naturally more inclined to engage in physical activity. Migration patterns also influence these differences as individuals often adapt to the lifestyle and opportunities available in their new surroundings. However, it's crucial to remember, highlight that Despite these insights, the pre precise reasons are still subject to ongoing research efforts and there's a need for more comprehensive studies to unravel the complexities of this phenomenon. So South Asians, like many individuals, face a set of common barriers that hinder regular physical activity. These include time constraints due to busy schedules, work commitments that often demand significant time and energy and a lack of convenient access to exercise facilities. In addition, cultural and societal factors sometimes prioritize academic or professional achievements over physical health, leading to a lack of emphasis on staying active. There's also the challenge of a lack of awareness regarding the critical importance of physical activity for overall well-being. Lastly, traditional dietary habits may create further hurdles, underscoring the need for a comprehensive approach to promoting physical activity within this community. Now that we've discussed possible barriers and have looked at the poor compliance of South Asian communities, the question is, why won't people be able to make this positive change and how can we provide effective support for them? Several reasons may contribute to these challenges, some of them being reduced social support, being around individuals with less healthy behaviors, a perceived lack of opportunities, health concerns, and the common constraint of limited time can all be significant barriers. To assist individuals in overcoming these barriers, it's crucial to understand their unique obstacles and take a person-centered approach. This means addressing their specific challenges and tailoring support to their needs. By identifying and tackling their barriers, we can empower individuals to make lasting changes in their physical activity routines. I think we're going to go back on to Menti again. We've got a few more questions here. How confident or unconfident would you describe yourself in terms of raising physical activity with your patients? That's good. Glad that we find people are co somewhat confident in raising physical activity with patients. Anybody else want to? Okay, I think we'll move on. 
So if I could get people to just answer this question as well. So what are the barriers to you raising physical activity with your patients for those who are finding it somewhat difficult or OK, so that's. That's that's a good place for me to start with as well, so lack of time so we can. Deal with that in I've got a bit of information on where you can get some more information regarding how to tackle lack of time. I've got a couple of slides on. What you can offer to patients and where to signpost them as these are the main areas where people are finding barriers to raising physical activity with their patients. OK. Again, this slide is a bit crowded, but there are a few behavior models that are available when it comes to implementing behavior change. One of them, which we commonly use is the COMB model of behavior, which is a valuable framework that helps us understand the elements that drive our actions. So the COMB model stands for capability, opportunity and motivation, and it's a framework which is designed to dissect and analyze behavior. First, we have capability. Now, this represents the individual's physical and psychological capacity to engage in physical activity. It includes knowledge, skills, and physical fitness. So, for example, someone with good fitness, knowledge, and physical health possesses the capability to engage in physical activity. Then we've got opportunity. This encompasses external factors that can enable or hinder physical activity. It includes environmental, social and cultural factors. An opportunity could be having access to parks, gyms or supportive social networks that encourage physical activity. Finally, we have motivation. This reflects the mental and emotional factors driving behavior change. It includes beliefs, desires and intentions. So in the context of physical activity, Motivation can be an individual's desire to stay healthy, lose weight, or simply enjoy exercise. But here, here's where it gets interesting. The COMBI model shows that these three components interact to implement a change. For someone to engage in physical activity successfully, they need the capability, opportunity, and motivation to align. For example, if someone has the capability and motivation, but no opportunity, perhaps due to a lack of nearby fitness facility, they're less likely to engage in physical activity. Conversely, even if someone has the opportunity, a lack of, a lack of motivation or capability, they may result in inactivity. So the COMBI model helps us pinpoint the specific factors that are limiting physical activity. It's a valuable tool for designing interventions and programs that target the right elements to promote a healthier, more active lifestyle. Motivation plays a vital role in the pursuit of lasting lifestyle changes, such as adapting a more active and healthier way of life. So to enhance motivation, we can employ a technique called motivational interviewing, which is characterized by principles such as engaging, focusing, evoking, and planning. It involves adopting a collaborative and empathetic approach to guide individuals through the stages of change, helping them clarify their goals, express their motivations and develop a concrete plan for action. Understanding the change of the stages of change model from pre contemplation to maintenance further equips us with the ability to tailor our support to each individual's unique position within their change journey. By recognizing these stages and applying motivational strategies accordingly, we can empower individuals to make the shift from motivation to action, promoting healthier and more active lifestyles. So one way of how you can support um, more change is using the SMART approach, which I've put a little table here for you guys to see. And this is what's commonly recommended as well. So for example, if I, give, if I go through this, for example, being specific means defining the goal clearly and precisely. So for instance, I want patient says I want to be more physically active becomes I aim to walk 30 minutes a day. 
measurable means you know if you are doing it and it's a means of having a way to track progress. A stands for achievable, which sets realistic expectations. It's essential that the goal is feasible and that it's it's to fit the individual's capabilities and resources. R stands for relevant. Relevant aligns the goal with their overall motivations and lifestyle, and it ensures the goal is pertinent and worthwhile. And the T stands for time bound, assigns a specific time frame for achieving the goal. For instance, I will start I will do it every day in January. By using the smart approach, you can significantly enhance their chances of making successful and lasting changes in their behavior. So I don't know if any if any of you have come across this resource previously, but but Moving Medicine is an amazing website and it's an initiative by the Faculty of Sport and Exercise Medicine UK, which provides evidence based condition specific information to help give you advice on physical activity at all stages of children, young people and adults treatment pathways. They provide a toolkit for healthcare professionals to help be to help people be more active. They also actually have an online course which is called the Active Foundation, which is a practical online learning course that teaches you to have quick, effective and positive conversations that encourage patients to do more physical activity. And for instance, if you go on their website, even if you go onto it now, if you needed to, if you click on um, and you click on the consultation guides on the prescribing movement section, it will take you on to these links. Now here, what happens is you can then click on the patient type, whether it's an adult or a child, and then you can click, click on the specific con uh, condition. And in this case, I've clicked on type 2 diabetes, and it tells you what you can do to discuss with your patient. And it then opens up this page, as you can see, which shows you the type 2 diabetes section. And they've got three sections there. They've got the one minute conversation, the five minute conversation, and the more minute conversation. And what this does is it opens you up, it opens up opportunities for you to discuss with patients on how to manage their conditions, chronic conditions with physical activity. So, for example, we understand that in the community there's time pressures when it comes to seeing patients, as some of the people I mentioned in Menti, that the lack of time to discuss physical activity. You've got one minute conversations where what you can do is you can plant this topic of physical activity to these patients and then they can you can read book them to come back and see you to discuss it in more detail but then you've got the five minute conversation and you've got the more minute conversation and these are things that you can bring about change to your patients and how you can speak to patients about what is possible so i find it i find this as a very useful toolkit to have in handy and the best part of this website is that it's even free so you don't have to pay for it And there are loads of resources that are available online um, to help you support in engaging with people. Um, so some of them are the e-learning for health for NHS staff, then the moving medicine, as I said, as I mentioned, has the online course, which is active call active foundations. Then there's a motivate to move on the Bassam website. And there's a lo lovely, amazing video by Dr. Mike Evans. I don't know if any of you guys have come across this before, but it gives you really good information on how to support patients in um, prom promoting and engaging people with physical activity. Then I think some of the next questions were, where are the resources available to signpost patients? And these are some really res useful resources that are available in Birmingham for patients for healthcare professionals like yourselves to signpost your patients. So you've got Active Parks Birmingham, which provides free physical activity sessions. Then you've got Be Active Free Swimming, group exercise classes and gym sessions for Birmingham residents. You've got Women's Walking Group, Kids Badminton, Women Only Fencing Group, which is in Ladywood. And another useful resources are if you signposted your patients to go to um, Sport Birmingham and search for local activities. There are loads of free and paid activities which are available and also through the Birmingham City Council. There, I'm sure these slides are going to be shared um, with all of you. So if you even wanted to click on them, yeah, there are links attached to them. You can just click on them and it will take you to the websites. Um, we've been, as 
Birmingham City Council have been working on a little project and trying to encourage um, the local population um, to do more physical activity. And we understand with the South Asian population, sometimes there can be uh, bar language barriers. So this is a little video which is um, played in Urdu to encourage patients to be more physically active. I'm just going to play that. I'm hoping this works. This is not working, is it? This is what always happens. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop presenting for a sec. Uh, I'm going to close this and see if I can find it. Just give me one minute, everyone, please stop sharing. Tima, can you tell me if the screen has come back up here again? Yes, let me just come back up. Oh, thank you. So I'm just going to play this little video which we have produced. Um, Ramiz, I think um, when you reshare your screen, you need to share it with audio because the sound isn't coming across. Oh, OK, there's no with audio coming across, is there? OK. At the top, when you when you reshare, at the top on the right, it says include computer sounds, and that would be the. Okay, include computer sound. Okay, yeah, yeah perfect. Let's start that again. Sorry about this. Thank you. Varzish kyu zaruri hai? Bahut se logo ka ye manna hai ki jab tak ki wo kisi masroof mulazamat ya tarzeh zindagi ka hissa hain, unhe varzish karne ki zarurat nahi. Lekin sehat aur tabil umri ke liye jismani sargarmi zaruri hai. کیا آپ کو معلوم ہے کہ انگلینڈ میں صرف 62 فیصد افراد ہی جسمانی سرگرمی کی ہفتہ وار رہنما ہدایات پر عمل پی رہے ہیں یہ تعداد ایشیائی کمیونٹیز میں اور بھی کم ہے جہاں صرف 55 فیصد لوگ چیف میڈیکل آفیسر کی ورزش کے حوالے سے رہنما ہدایات پر عمل پی رہے ہیں بیم کمیونٹی سے تعلق رکھنے والے افراد کا زیابتی سٹو میں مبتلا ہونے کا امکان دو سے چار گناہ زیادہ ہوتا ہے اور زیابتی دل کی بیماری کے حوالے سے آپ کو لاحق خطرات کو دگنا کرتی ہے اب اس کے حوالے سے کچھ کر گزرنے کا وقت ہے بالغان کو ہفتے میں پانچ دن تیس منٹ تک درمیانی درجے کی سرگرمی انجام دینے کا حدف اپنانا چاہیے ہفتے میں دو مرتبہ طاقتور سرگرمیاں انجام دینا تمام بڑے ازلاتی گروپس کے لیے مفید ہوگا یہ آپ کے دل کی بیماری یا سٹروک کے خطرے کو کم کر سکتا ہے اور آپ اس کی وجہ سے زیادہ مضبط محسوس کر سکتے ہیں یہ صرف دوڑنے جیسی کارڈیو ورزشوں کے متعلق نہیں ہے رقص کرنا گھاس کاٹنے والی مشین چلانا اور بھاری بھرکم شاپنگ بیکس اٹھانا بھی آپ کے روزانہ کے آداف میں شمار ہوتے ہیں So I'm just going to get back onto the get back onto sharing that again So before, I think I'm getting close to the end. Um, if you could just say if you feel more confident talking about physical activity now with your patients.
Any more responses? OK, so I'm, I'm hoping by the end of this um, webinar, everyone, uh, most people who have attended today are more aware of South Asian population being generally less physical. Sorry. Can you move your mic, please, Mezian? Thank you. I mean, you can continue, please. Right, sorry, I thought there was some interruption. Um, so, yes, I'm hoping by the end of this webinar that um, the healthcare professionals who have attended today, uh, where the, the South Asian population is quite a big population in Birmingham, and they do represent quite a large area, and generally they're less physically active. And as we saw, the trend is more towards not being more physically active than they should be, and we need to start focusing a bit more on them and physical activity can help improve health and well-being in all populations we discussed importance of understanding behavior change and using motivational interviewing techniques and also most importantly the uh, resources that are available within the local area for people to signpost their patients to for further help and remember and every remember every movement matters <laughs>